made a couple of videos with real ancient stories on there. So now I'm going to make one with some more recent stories. This first one is not really a story. It's something that my uh, one of my grandmothers, the one that raised me when I was little, one of the things that I remember that she taught me when I was young, she said never to give in to hate because hate is such a powerful emotion that it'll take you over and it will consume you and then in time you'll become the thing or the person that you most hated. I guess if somebody knew me good then um, I'd have to remind them that they should do as I say and not as I do in this case because um, even though I respect my grandmother and I believe what she said I guess I'm a pretty bitter and pretty anger, uh, angry person, so um, I don't really adhere to that, but it makes a lot of sense. There's a couple of other stories that I want to put on here that were given to me when I was older and able to remember more about the person and what was said. And <clears throat> both of these stories, I guess it was about well, between 20 and 30 years ago, I think, when um, when my own Chi told me these two stories. One thing about her is that when I used to have something heavy on my mind and I would go to visit her, whenever I got to her house, always she set me down at her table, gave me something to eat, and gave me a cup of coffee. And it um, seemed like every time I had something heavy, on my mind before I ever mentioned it or said anything to her while I was eating she would tell me a story and that story always answered whatever it was that um, uh, you know that I the question that I had and one of those times she told me this story when she was young you know it was these people still went around in buckboards and all that and she was uh, going somewhere in a buckboard with her grandfather. Her grandfather was, um, was an old man, and he was a medicine man, and lived most of his life in the buffalo days back when we were still free before we were forced onto these concentration camps or reservations. And as they were going along, she heard someone call her name, her Indian name, and so she told her grandpa to stop and she looked around she got out of the buckboard and there was a little flower on the prairie that was in her head she could hear it talking to her and she walked over and she sat down and this flower told her uh, the Lakota name for it and that it was a medicine that had been um, you know, nobody had used it for a long time and told her what it was used for and how it was used and when it was harvested and everything. When when it was done, she got back into the buckboard and her grandpa was staring at her and she told him everything that that flower told her. And then he sat there for a little bit and he said, yeah, I remember when I was little gathering that plant for my grandparents, he said, but no one has used it for years, even before the reservation era. So after that story, like she told me, there's no need to get so upset if people forget their language and ceremonies and medicines and whatever she said, because the spirits don't forget the plants, the animals, you know, the, the powers of this place, they all remember all these things that were given to us. And so if we forget them, maybe there's a reason why, or maybe we don't even deserve them. And then someday in the future, you know, maybe there's going to be a child born that's got the right kind of a mind and the right heart, and then the spirits will talk to that child and give give that knowledge back to them. <clears throat> and there's one other story that she told me one time that I want to add on here. This has to do with the importance of uh, eagle feathers. Her first marriage was to a mixed-blood farmer. 
One day he was out breaking some new ground and he found an eagle feather on the ground. And so he picked it up and he put it in a box under the seat of his tractor. He kept working and then when he came home that night, he gave it to her. Back then there was no electricity or you know, refrigerators had ice box. And so she took a manila envelope because she said that she didn't have no use for that feather, but one of her cousins was a medicine man and she figured, well, next time he comes to visit, I'll give it to him. You know, and maybe he can, you know, somebody who might need it. So she put it inside of a manila envelope and she sealed it, put it on top of her ice box. And it sat up there for quite some time. And then when he came over next to visit, they were drinking coffee. And then she remembered that eagle feather. So she said, oh, I have something for you. And then she got up there, took that envelope down and gave it to him. And he tore it open. He looked in there. She said he looked kind of funny when he looked inside. Turned it upside down and he emptied it. And a sprig of sage fell out of the inside of that envelope. That was all that was in there. It had been sealed. Nobody else had been at their house. And the only thing she put in there was the eagle feather. But when it was opened, the only thing that was in there was um, a sprig of sage. She didn't like it how people put uh, eagle feathers on baseball caps or cowboy hats or hung it from their rear view mirror. And so that, I think those stories are good to, to share with people just to give you something to think about. I don't think most Indian people today realize how colonized we have become and how much we've lost of our original understanding of things.